What's up gamers, it's Skier, and this is the first recording on my new computer. I had to upgrade my CPU. I now have a Ryzen 9 3950X, which is very nice, which means I'm doing CPU encoding. I have new uh, render settings, so hopefully this video turns out well. Now, we have Patcher 1.2 today. Originally, this was just going to be Patcher 1.1, but um, that kind of came out like 10 days ago, and I forgot to make my video on it, and I added a really cool feature to 1.2 that I want to publish immediately. Let's get into it. Post editing skier here with one request. Please, please, please smash the like button. It really helps a lot. Post editing skier two here. Uh, shout out to Lamalad7 and Timu for their excellent help in addition to Patcher for these releases. Now, I'm going to go over the feature that I made for Patcher 1.2, which is why I'm actually making this video and publishing it immediately. And that is there's a bug in Minecraft. Well, it's actually not in Minecraft, it's in the Minecraft uh, input library called LWJGL2. And basically, what it means is if you have hotkeys set for mouse button four and five, these would work fine, but as soon as you press shift, control, any other modifier, they would not work. Now I have corrected for this bug here. So as you can see, um, although I have them set to my mouse buttons here, I can freely press shift, control, any other keys and still be able to freely and independently use those two inputs. On to the actual patcher 1.1 features. Many of these things can be configured by typing slash patcher and just search some key terms. Like our first one, entity culling. Well, that's not how you spell entity. Entity. There you go, you see that. So entity culling, it doesn't render entities you can't see. Now Minecraft does some calculations to figure out what it should render, but those calculations are far from perfect. And they oftentimes render a lot of entities that are off the screen and therefore do not need to be rendered and are just wasting uh, clock cycles on that. And therefore slowing your lowering your FPS, so we have corrected for that. We also have something called don't call name tags, which is related to that, which basically means that name tags like that don't get culled because name tags sometimes it's not, oh, there you go. You can see right now how the entity is going to be is off screen, but the name tag is still on screen, and therefore it adds a little bit of like iffiness towards the edge. Uh, so we just added an option to completely disable that and return to the vanilla behavior for that, just in case that annoyed you. But otherwise, you will enjoy a nice performance improvement by only rendering what is on screen. We've also had the ability to move the water overlay. So normally, to go under water in Minecraft, you can see this kind of this weird this this overlay thing, right? That's that kind of just shows you're underwater. But if you're like me and most people, you can figure out that you're underwater. So you just type slash patcher. You go in here, you search water, and you remove that. There we go. It makes your game much clearer underwater. makes it much easier to see. Next, we've implemented a hotkey here. So you can go into controls. And it is drop all items on a stack. So I don't have that set to anything. But if you had this set to something, you would be able to hit that hotkey. And it would drop the entire stack instead of having to hit control Q. Which, especially on Mac OS, is very finicky. Um, because control does some other things and also messes with LWJGL2. We've added transparent chat field here so you can see as I'm typing there is no there's no box around it. It's just just that so you can configure this in slash patcher. Just type chat. Just a little search here and transparent chat field. Now when I turn it off you can see this and we also of course have the fast chat. Um, so if you go here uh, you can turn off transparent chat as a whole which these may improve performance because yeah alpha blending slow. We've implemented clean view, which is configured again in slash patcher and these just type clean. And what clean view does is it disables all the particle effects. So instead of showing your own particle effects, you know, you have those weird symbols like float around your screen. Most people use a status effect HUD so they know what potion effects they have. They don't need their screen constantly being blocked by all of those elements. We've added screenshot manager integration. Now the screenshot manager was going to be its own standalone mod and still might be removed from patcher at some point in the future, but we've reallocated developer resources and now um, we've kind of just added everything we have here. So you can open the screenshot like that. Uh, you can favorite it, delete it, upload it, copy it, and open the folder that it is currently within. We've added an option to remove the realms button from the main menu. There is no purpose for that being there simply because um, there you can't, you can't use realms on 1.8. We've added the option to disable block breaking particles, disable the enchantment book. So that book on enchantment tables that kind of spins around, and does all that. We've added the option to remove that because that does have a hit on performance, especially when there's a lot of enchantment tables around. We've added the option to disable GL error checking. Now, most of the time, um, most people don't care about this and it's just an unnecessary step in the rendering pipeline because it checks for errors constantly. And if you're not a developer, there's nothing you can do about those errors. So knowing about them is not gonna change anything and it's just gonna slow the game down, reporting on them and spamming your logs folder. We've added the option to save chat when toggling full screen. So normally if you were typing something like this and you hit, you changed full screen, it would delete it. But now we've added the, uh, sorry that it goes black there, but we added the ability. So this stays persistent, which is very great because otherwise Minecraft used to close the chat window and then reopen it and then all your text would be gone and it wasn't fun. We've added a log optimizer, again, configurable through slash patch. When you type log, you can, you can find it. And what this does is this will delete logs 
um, older than a certain amount of date. The default is 30 here, but if you want to delete the logs that are one day old automatically, it'll automatically do that when the setting is enabled, or you can make, make it as long as 90 days. We've added the ability to refresh your skin, so you can type refresh refresh skin here, and boom, that will refresh your skin, so you no longer have to re-log if you change your skin, your Minecraft skin. We've added super compact chat. Now what this does is like the old compact chat. If you say the same, if you see the same message in chat twice, it will stack it. But instead of just being the previous message, if it is any within the slash within the configurable amount, it will, we're going to search compact chat. So mine is nine right now. Uh, we can set it to 10 up to 25. So if any messages, a repeat of those last number of X messages, it will stack those together, um, which is fantastic. Cleans up your chat a lot. We've had the option to ignore tall grass and flowers in third person. What this does is this just makes it so when you're running around and there's tall grass everywhere, you can actually see through them and not just have like your, your camera become right against your face as soon as you touch a piece of tall grass. We've added anti-clear chat. Now anti-clear chat can just be configured here. Anti, like this. And what this does is this just removes all the blank messages from chat. We've replaced the open to land button multiplier with the serverless. So you click this and it takes you back to the serverless. So you can join whatever server you want here. I just rejoined Hypixel. We've optimized cloud rendering quite substantially, so now frames should be quite a lot better when you have clouds on, which is nice. Uh, what we did is we actually just uploaded them to the graphics card as a static asset instead of having to re-upload them every single frame. I don't know why Minecraft didn't do that, but we did it, which is great. And we made a ton of other micro optimizations around the game that should improve FPS quite a bit. We fixed a plethora of vanilla bugs. I'll just have those on screen now. There's no reason to talk through them. You can see what they do. And here's just some miscellaneous things from Patcher 1.1 as well. Now for Patcher 1.2, there weren't that many features because we had just begun development on it, but I'm pushing this out now that I have the new um, hotkey thing fixed. And some of these things just include a much faster startup time, uh, especially when you have a lot of mods that do core modding. Um, it's gonna be a lot faster, which is great. My startup time is now under 10 seconds for Minecraft. Absolutely amazing, it's very fast. We're getting, Patcher's really making the game quite, quite usable. And then we've gone ahead and fixed some more vanilla bugs. Now, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and comment. It really does help me a lot as a developer uh, when you promote my videos and interact with them. Now, if you're a developer for another client and would like to use any of these features, please reach out and license them to us for a reasonable license fee instead of just stealing our code. Thank you very much. Have a good day.